to Jeff Karina from the Venomong Foundation, Sid from my foundation, state colleagues, to supporters of the New Colombo Plan and to New Colombo Plan participants and alumni. I am so delighted to be here this evening and the buzz in this room as we entered speaks volumes about the success of the New Colombo Plan that only commenced as a government policy initiative in late 2013. As Phil indicated, if you travel around our region, the Indian Ocean, Asia Pacific, in any one of the 38 countries that are eligible to receive Australian students under the new Colombo plan, government ministers know about this program Business leaders know about this program. Universities and students know of the new Colombo plan. It's no coincidence that we chose the name New Colombo Plan because, of course, there was an original Colombo plan in the 1950s through to the early 1980s. A scheme that brought young people from the region to Australia to study in our universities, live with our families on our campuses, get to know Australians and leave with an Australian qualification. The young original Colombo Plan scholars are today amongst the political business community leaders in our region. I can sit down at a bilateral meeting opposite a cabinet minister from Singapore <coughs> and they will have been in Australia as a Colombo Plan scholar. You just cannot build that kind of connection, that kind of understanding that relationship that endures, unless you've had this, what was then a remarkable opportunity to live and study in another country. And I, for a very long time, even prior to my experience at Harvard, have wanted young Australians to have the opportunity to live and study and work, have a work experience in a country in our region, because this is where Australia's future lies in the Indian Ocean, Asia Pacific. So a whole raft of issues all came together when I became Shadow Foreign Minister after my experience as Education Minister. And I knew I needed the right advice and the right guidance to ensure that what was a dream, what was a, a hope or an aspiration on my part would become a reality. And we put together a reference group and Phil was part of that when in opposition, and it's not easy for opposition to attract people's support um, on a purely voluntary basis to advise on the development of public policy. But because this was an idea whose time had well and truly come, we got incredible support from the <coughs> university sector, the private sector, NGOs, governments, states, across the board, and importantly, the countries of our region who, as Paul Ramage would know, were quite taken aback that Australia would want to invest in our young people to study in their universities. It was seen as an, as an enormous vote of confidence by Australia in the future of our region and Australia's place in it. That's why it's been run out of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, not out of the Education Department as part of our international <coughs> uh, student exchange. This is a significant government foreign policy initiative. It's not just about the experience that the young student has, it's about building relationships at a government to government level, business to business, people to people. I can't think of a better way of investing $100 million of Australian taxpayer funds than into a program that gives young Australians between the ages of 18 and 28, with a few exceptions of a bit older from time to time, to have this experience of studying in a university in our region, of living in that country, and of having a work experience or a mentorship or an internship, it is transformational. And we've customised it. Unlike other scholarship programs, we've customised it so that the students can go for a short period of time, if that's all they're available to spend, to semester-long or year-long courses. 
they can pick up skills, language ability, perceptions, ideas, insights that can only come through an experience such as this. And in all my planning, and the steering committee still continues to this day to support us and guide us and advise us, in all my planning, there was a gap. We had the universities on board, we had the countries on board. Some of them have had to change their laws and their regulations to enable new Colombo plan scholars to undertake work experience. So this has been at the highest level that we've received support. And so businesses got it, the NGO community gets it, everybody gets it. But what was missing was ensuring that the Australian students were able to maximise this extraordinary opportunity to get the very most out of it. So, it's been a partnership all the way through, and I want to thank the universities for embracing it and working to our deadlines and timetables, to the 38 nations involved for embracing an Australian initiative so warmly, and it builds bridges across so many divides, to the business community for partnering with us, and not only Australian businesses giving students the opportunity to work in their operations overseas, but also the businesses of the host countries taking on Australian students. Reverse the situation and think about it. If we ask Australian businesses to give foreign students work experience, think about the challenges that uh, we would be facing as a government. But governments overseas have willingly embraced our students getting this kind of insight into the day-to-day -day life of businesses and NGOs and of the private sector. And it has been an absolutely marvellous partnership. But what was missing was that a pre departure cross cultural training. And that's where the Benelong Foundation and then the My Foundation and Asia Link and Asia Link Business have come to the fore. Between them, the two foundations have contributed $885,000 to the new Colombo plan. And I thank you most sincerely for that enormously generous contribution to what is a government program. And yet, you see what I see. This is an investment not only in our young people who will come back to Australia with new ideas and new concepts and new connections and networks that will last a lifetime, but you also see it as an investment in the future of Australia. And I thank you so much for that insight and your perception that this is such a, a positive uh, use of obviously precious resources from the foundation. I also want to thank the businesses that have got behind the new Colombo plan. And this recent phenomenon of, of government and business partnering in international engagement is something that I want to continue to foster because the results have been so extraordinary. And whether it's uh, King and Wood Nelson's in China, or BHP Billiton in Singapore, or GE in PNG, we are working with Australian companies and host country companies to give our new Colombo plan students an insight into what it's like to work in that country and to bring that experience back to Australia. So whether they are global citizens or regional citizens or spend their time here nationally, they will be able to add so much more to the productivity, prosperity of this country as an Australian who has had this experience. Because I know each and every one of them will use the experience to their advantage, but also to the advantage of this country. So I could not be more proud of this program, I have to say. Yesterday, was it only yesterday? Mm. Yesterday I was in Sydney and I met with the Sri Lankan Foreign Minister, his first official visit to Australia, and the first time we've had a Sri Lankan minister visit Australia in many years, given the significant conflict that that country has undergone in more recent years. And he asked me about the new Colombo plan. And he said, given that at the time you named it, Sri Lanka was still in a time of conflict, in a time of turmoil. Uh, why did you call it the new Colombo Plan? And I said, because the original Colombo Plan had so much goodwill about it, that people knew immediately the Colombo Plan meant something to do with students. 
and I wanted to pay our respect to that previous plan because we have built on that concept that just reversed it. And he was <coughs> delighted that they had been able to share that name. By the end of this year, having done a pilot program in 2014 with Indonesia, Singapore, Hong Kong and Japan as the destinations, <coughs> rolling the program out in 2015, by the end of 2016, this year, over 10,000 young Australians will have been overseas in our region as part of the New Colombo plan. So I think I've made a case for further funding. <laughs> <laughs> and if any of you happen to see the Treasurer anytime soon, you can just drop that into the conversation. <laughs> because this is truly one of those initiatives that will be seen as having transformed Australia's place in the world like few others. And if we can ensure that more young Australians, many who have never been overseas before, many who have never had a passport, in fact, in a number of instances, they're the first person in their family to have a passport and go overseas. If we're able to provide that opportunity to more and more Australians, we will have generations of young people who are sensitive to our place in the world, who are able to understand not just the um, broader picture, but the nuances of our relationships with other countries and add so much more to the peace and prosperity of Australia. That's what the New Colombo plan is all about. Relationships, peace, prosperity. And I'm absolutely delighted to confirm that we have set up an alumni chapter. We will have an alumni chapter here in Victoria and one of the, I can say, one of the shortcomings of the original Colombo plan is that in the days pre-technology, they didn't maintain a database of alumni. Uh, we won't make that mistake, and we will ensure that our new Colombo plan alumni, our supporters of the program, our advocates for the program, and support and mentor the students coming through so that this is a program that endures, a non-partisan program that has bipartisan support that will continue way beyond the life of any one government. The Benelong Foundation and the Maya Foundation's contribution to the pre-departure cross-cultural training rounds it off and makes this a truly unique student experience and foreign policy initiative. Thank you so much.